Reanimated 4 is here and it brings something wild to the table. CSS style animations in React Native. If you've been using shared values and with Spring for your animations, get ready for a fresh new approach. And let's talk about how we go from this to this. In this video, I'll show you what's changed, how the new CSS animations and transitions work, and everything else you need to consider before upgrading to Reanimated 4. Quick spoiler, it's only compatible with the new architecture but the simplicity and declarative style might just be worth it. So if your app is still on the legacy architecture, you either have a new reason to migrate to the new architecture or you have to stick to reanimated version 3. But if you're ready for something new, then let's take a look. The Reanimated 4 beta started in January 2025 and we now have the final release in July. So half a year later, but I think the wait was worth it. I already had a video about most of the important stuff back then going over the um, animations and transitions. So let's just quickly take a look at what's new and what's now finally released. Um, I really like the slogan, it is new but also very familiar. This really matches the theme of this release because it's it's breaking in some changes but it also brings something good and it keeps what was great already. Let's take a look. So in the past your applications might have looked like this. You have an animated style, you have a shared value and you use with spring animations to create your animations in your application. That looked like something like this where you can nicely control the animation here and you can easily create these kind of powerful animations with dumping and everything else included. Now, if we want to convert this here to the new way of doing it, it would just look pretty much like this. This is all the code you need. We have some general uh, styling down here, but that's not really important. The most of the important stuff happens in here. And actually we could get rid of that function as well and update the state directly on the button press. So the transitions just look like CSS transitions on the web. You can also bring up the uh, API, or let's have this side by side. So these are the key elements that we can use. Maybe we can make this a bit bigger. We have the transition property, that's the item you want to uh, transition to or animate. We have the duration, of course, that's self-explaining. We have a delay optional as well. Then we have our transition timing function. So this is like, does it start faster and then become slower in the end? Or does it start slow and then go fast or something like this? And then we also have a transition behavior if you want to, but that's not very commonly used and you don't really have to set that value. As a result, if we now look at this new way, it kind of looks the same. The good eye should already notice that there's a difference between this animation here and the animation we see here. That is because in the old animation with shared values, we were also able to use something like damping, stiffness, you can use values like how heavy something is, that changes how things animate on the screen. So it's a kind of more granular way to create animation. However, in many cases, that's not really required. Maybe this one is a bit boring, but overall, it gets the job done. And it does so in a lot less code. You don't have to learn like the shared values, the hooks and all of that. And web developers coming to React Native will feel familiar with this stuff. So these are CSS transitions. You can now also use CSS animations. So if we're gonna check out a little example here, just something that rotates and rotates back, okay? Not too crazy, but we can cre create all of this with an animation like this. So here again, we have an animated view and if it is rotating, we apply the CSS style rotate. Now, why is this special? For a couple of reasons. So first, we can create our animation. So this is the animation name rotate. Um, this is actually the one up here. And you might notice that I have a CSS.create here, which is coming from React Native Reanimated. Uh, word on the modularization coming in a second. For the moment, you could also do this with style sheet and generate this. However, I think if you use um, the CSS from reanimated here, you're gonna have a safer time because uh, the style sheet might not support the properties in the way they should be supported. At least that was my initial feeling. So with this code, again, we can see that this 
simply does an animation. Uh, it takes about two seconds. It has a 200 milliseconds delay. Uh, we use, once again, a timing function, ease in out. So you see it becomes faster and then goes slower to the end again. And we also have alternate, so it rotates right and then left and it does so infinite. Now, additionally, we can also midway, uh, let's do this, can we do? Oh, uh, we haven't applied this. So you could, in theory, also pause this uh, with another value. So if you check out the documentation on CSN animations, you see uh, we got all of this included. We got the name, we got the duration, we got the delay, we got the timing function, direction, um, and you can now also could set the animation play state. So if we wanted to, we could probably do this in here. Uh, so if we pause, the play state will be set to pause. Let's see, let's try this again. Uh, duh, duh. Animation start, and then I pause. So when I press pause, my paused value here will be set and the animation play state will be paused and I can just resume this if I want to. I don't know if this is super helpful, but um, just wanted to mention that it's in there because normally CSS transitions are for like regular transitions. The, you, they are tied to state, you do them once and they're done. Animations are more like, what do they say, like fire and forget. You can't really control what's going on, but with the animation play state you can kind of control it by at least saying, hey, please pause here or please keep going. Now, this is really the essential part of this release. So um, this makes up also a big chunk of the release notes here. Looks like my animation on this page isn't even working anymore. <laughs> what is going on? I can't scroll that page anymore, medium. What are you built with? I don't know. Um, so start using CSS animations and transitions. There are many more powerful examples in the reanimated uh, docs and the GitHub repository. Now, what about workloads? If you've used reanimated in the past, you know that um, these things automatically get workloadized under the hood. So that basically means um, these parts of your code that change the UI run on the UI thread, not the main JavaScript thread. That makes, or that is the whole logic of reanimated, that these animations are performing running on the native level. Like um, if you open up Xcode, we did this in the previous video as well. Uh, so you can look under the hood of these animations. You're gonna see that even if you use CSS animations, that stuff will run on the native views and the native UI here, uh, in the UI layer. So worklets are now in their own package, which is quite interesting for a couple of reasons. First, you now have to install this package additionally. If you go into the package JSON here, you're gonna see I have React Native Reanimated 4 and React Native Worklets at the latest version. And React Native Worklets is now actually a standalone package. So you can see this uh, from software mention. You can use Re uh, React Native Worklets or you need to use them and install them with Reanimated, but you can also use them for many other things. Because if you check out the documentation, uh, you're gonna see all these uh, elements here and you can just put pretty much everything that you want on that UI thread and have some, some more threading in your JavaScript application, in your React Native application. Uh, I think this is pretty cool. And I definitely want to make a new video on worklets and how you could use them in the future. They're already used in apps like, uh, or in the, uh, from Marco Savi, React Native Vision Camera, where you have to process like hundreds of frames. So you have to do this on the UI thread and process them with a worklet. Pretty cool stuff. And now it's a standalone package. It's extracted from the core of Reanimator, which totally makes sense. Coming back to that in a sec. Just a final word on this, on the worklets. Um, no, I think we got this, right? We got this. You can check it out on its own page. Um, now, speaking of some other things, compatibility. I already mentioned this in the beginning. If you want to use Reanimated for this is new architecture only. That means your React Native application has to use the new architecture. If it's not using, then you still have to rely on the latest uh, version 3 release of Reanimated. But I think it's definitely worth and everyone's uh, showing you these days that the legacy architecture is going away. So it's definitely time to migrate to the new architecture if you haven't done so. Additionally, there are also only a handful of versions. So reanimated for uh, only works with new architecture and you can use uh, like the last couple of versions. So from 0.78 to 81, 
These are the supported React Native versions for Reanimated. So if your app is on 0.75 or anything in here, you can't use Reanimated 4. You can also not really use the latest stuff of version 3. So you see the cut off here. So be aware of these things uh, if you want to try the new Reanimated version. Probably migrate your application to a recent React Native version and the new architecture first. Then. Uh, some other breaking changes here. We have the dependency on React Native Workloads talked about this and uh, you don't really have to do anything to your Babel plugin if you're using Expo. They automatically have. They change the default behavior of the with spring animation but if you have a custom animation that's not a problem. Uh, they removed use workload callback because it was rarely used and they also renamed, I think this was a bigger one right here, they renamed use scroll view offset to use scroll offset. So if you see some red lines in your application you know why um, besides that nothing really else in here uh, as I already said they're working on making this more modular so in the future I actually had a hard time importing this correctly um, I wanted to import the uh, CSS from its own package so it should be add reanimated slash CSS I couldn't really do this yet maybe I have to install it separately but if you just install the main package of reanimated like this you're gonna have access to everything anyway at least for the moment maybe this changes in the future I'm not entirely <laughs> sure about this also one thing for the future that's not included in this release is uh, shared element transitions. They had a release video and they said they're working on shared element transitions. This will work also only with a new architecture and I've seen already code that works. So be aware of that in the future. Um, then regarding the animations, uh, as I said before, if you include it in a style sheet, you sometimes might encounter a problem that you're using or trying to use something that you remember from the web that won't work in your application. So there is in the documentation a table about supported style properties. Most of this, as you can see, is gray. Can we scroll, zoom out a bit, uh, is green. Just a handful of red elements in there. So check this out if you want to understand why your transition or animation isn't doing what you thought it would do. But overall, there are pretty cool things possible with this. I actually also used exactly the same code here uh, for mobile and for web. And I took this example from uh, one of the demos I had in the previous video for a little campfire. So just to show you a bit bigger example, here we go. Our campfire running smoothly on the native platform as well as on the web without any code changes. So this is pretty cool. I really love it. Um, uh, it's definitely also great to see these things here in action like CSS keyframes. So we got a couple of examples included that we can take a look at to structure our own animations. And this will hopefully make the life for you easier as you transition to reanimated. All right, so reanimated 4 looks exactly like the update to our favorite animation library that we needed. As they say in the release notes, reanimated 4 is new, but at the same time also feels very familiar. It now relies on the new architecture, giving us all a nudge in that direction if we haven't done it already. It makes it easier for web developers to get into React Native because they can now also use CSS animations and transitions and not only the shared value values and worklets like before. And the more modular approach with the sub packages makes it easier in the future to maintain reanimated and the worklets package and all the other packages and also might decrease our bundle size in the end. And while CSS animations are now recommended for basic things in your application, you don't have to rewrite all the shared values and animations you currently have in your application. Just gradually adopt the new API and keep using your shared values and worklets and all the animations you've set up in the more more complex use cases, for example, when you have a gesture and animation combined. I'm really looking forward to using Reanimated 4 and the CSS uh, style animations in my upcoming tutorials. And I'd love to know, what are your thoughts on this? Now, after half a year of a beta, we finally have it. Have you used Reanimated 4? Have you migrated your applications? Any problems? Any things you wish for in the future? Let me know in the comments. Until then, stay subscribed. Check out galaxies.dev if you want to become a better React Native developer, and I will catch you in the next one. So until then, happy coding, Simon.